Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a cantilever column which is under compressive force but with an eccentricity. Usually, this problem is solved in many books by two sides hinged. Now, I'm going to solve another example, might be a little bit different, and we will see the effect of eccentricity how the column would buckle sooner with greater eccentricity. Let's do it. Now, let's sketch the question. Contiliver column with the length of L with the force at the end but with eccentricity with E, point A and point B. And this column is with the bending stiffness of EI. Now we are going to calculate how eccentricity would affect the buckling. X and Y, and we can sketch the deformed shape of the column. So we assume or we expect that it buckles this way. I exaggerated this. And now here is the force P. The rotation might be very small, so we can assume that horizontally it is also E and the tip of the column is expected to rotate like delta x and this is y in a general point the deflection of the beam or the column will be y so now we want to calculate what is the bending moment at this distance. Since the bottom of the column or point A is the origin, the distance up to the section point is X and the rest is L minus X. And also the horizontal distance between the section point to the tip of the column is delta minus y. So now m will be p times e plus delta minus y or PE plus delta minus PY. Now M is positive negative EI times second derivative of Y. So to understand when it is positive and when it is negative, uh, there is a very simple way. So if the curvature and the bending moment are with the same direction of the y, then m equals to ei second derivative of y. Otherwise, for example, if the curvature is in the other side of the coordinate that is selected, then m is minus ei second derivative of y. So in this case, you can see that the m, the curvature is in the same side of y. So as a result, m will be ei second derivative of y equals to pe plus delta minus py. 
now it will be ei y second plus by equals to p e plus delta y second plus p over ei y equals to p over ei e plus delta and here i can assume that p over ei is for example lambda power by two then so i will have a second order linear differential equation and the solution for that will be a sinus lambda x plus b cosinus lambda x plus e plus delta what kind of boundary condition do we have at x equals zero y is zero and also the rotation is zero the second derivative should be zero so these are the boundary conditions y at zero is zero and derivative of y is also zero i can write also y prime a lambda cosinus lambda x minus b lambda sinus lambda x and at point zero the first equation will be b plus e plus delta equals zero then b will be minus e minus delta so here a lambda will be zero as a result a will be zero now i can rewrite the deformation equation so y will be minus e plus delta cosinus lambda x plus e plus delta or e plus delta times minus cosinus lambda x plus one y equals e plus delta one minus cosinus lambda x y at l will be delta so delta will be e plus delta times one minus cosinus lambda l so delta will be e plus delta minus e plus delta cosinus lambda l i can cross these two and now from here e minus e cosinus lambda l minus delta cosinus lambda l equals zero then delta cosinus lambda l will be e minus e cosinus lambda l and then delta will be e 1 minus cosinus lambda l divided by cosinus lambda l or i can write it down as 1 over cosinus lambda l minus 1 so we know 1 over cosinus lambda l is second as a result delta will be e times second lambda l minus 1 now uh, we want to see what is the maximum for example horizontal displacement delta was e times second lambda l minus one and if we sketch our member one more time delta is this distance and here it was e so we can call this delta max for example so delta max will be delta plus e and i can substitute delta with the calculated equation so it will be e second lambda l minus e plus e as a result 
delta max will be e second lambda l. Now, I can assume that, for example, e is a factor or a portion of l. It can be 1%, 2%, 5%, 10% of the total length. And we know that lambda is lambda power by 2 is p over ei. And by recalling the Euler buckling force for a cantilever, p Euler is pi 2 ei over 2l power by 2. So then lambda 2 times L2 will be P L2 over EI. Then I can write this down with P divided by EI over L2. And from here, I can calculate P is pi 2 EI over 4 L2. As a result, P E times 4 over pi 2 is EI over L2. I can just substitute this. Then it will be P over PE times 4 over pi 2. So it will be pi 2 over 4 e over pe p over pe is a dimensionless number i can assume it's let's say r2 then lambda 2 l2 will be pi 2 over 4 r2 or lambda l will be p over 2 times r If I substitute these two E and lambda L by the maximum horizontal displacement delta max, then we will have delta max will be alpha times L times second pi over 2 times R. I divide delta max by L then it will be alpha second pi over 2 r. r is also dimensionless. Now I can sketch this to see how it looks like. I write the function delta relative as a function of alpha and r equals to alpha times second pi divided by 2 times r. Now I can plot here from 0 also for vertical element also 0 and this one to one and this one also to one now here i can put r and for now i go with a very tiny eccentricity so this is how it looks like the buckling by respect of r, r is a square root of e over ei. So for this reason, it is better if I go with r power by 2. r power by 2 is p over pe. Now this is very tiny eccentricity, 1% of the length. Now let's go to see how it looks like when it is 5%, for example.
and and also more here we can see that uh, so the the formation is coming from the bending uh, at tip the vertical axis now shows r power by 2 and here we can see that r power by 2 is p over p over e and the horizontal axis is delta over l you might be interested in calculating of uh, maximum bending moment so maximum bending moment is P times delta max, so it will be P times alpha times L second P over 2 R. So now if we look at our column with the initial eccentricity of E, so the moment on the top is P times E. Alpha L is E, so M max will be P times E second P over 2 R. So I can divide it by P E to have a dimensionless value. And we can see that the Maximum bending moment divided by the initial moment. So let's say this is M0. M max over M0 is a function of second. This is 1. Also, you might be interested in calculating of the maximum stress. So maximum stress is P divided by area due to the compression plus M divided by section modulus due to the moment. So sigma max can be written as P divided by area plus P E second P over 2 instead of R. I can write down P over P E square root divided by w and then for example it can be simplified by 1 over a plus e second divided by w which w is i over c of the section that was the end of this uh, example and we went through a cantilever under the compressive load, but this time with decentricity. What we noticed with increasing the eccentricity, the buckle would happen earlier, but the maximum or the critical load would not be changed. So it's like a perturbation. Earlier we discussed with the other video about the perturbation and also imperfection. Uh, in this example, we noticed that with the increasing of the eccentricity then the column would buckle sooner but the maximum critical load will remain as same as when there is no eccentricity see you in next videos thank you for watching